We hear a lot today about the benefits of mindfulness and even mindful eating. And there's even been some studies that have indicated that mindful eating can be beneficial for weight loss. And I kind of feel like just the fact that a person is becoming conscious of what they're shoving in their gullet can really create a lot of benefits when it comes to weight loss. But what we want to talk about in this video is can mindful eating improve your digestion? There's a lot of people who believe it can. So let's see if there's any science behind this or if this is just a bucket of bunk. Let's find out. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So when we're asking this question, can mindful eating improve digestion, I'm going to let you know right now that my short answer is, yeah, yeah, that could help that. But my answer is also, <laughs> no. So let's understand why that can be both of those answers. And I'm going to put a link in the description below to a study that indicated that this mindful eating really can improve the gastrointestinal function. And let's look at why that might be the case. So mindful eating has been described as eating in a state of non-judgmental awareness, kind of understanding your connection between your body and that food. And I'm not one that's going to tell you, I want you to be one with your food. I just don't talk to people like that. If you feel like that's uh, something that's beneficial, I'm fine with that. I, I think that there's some good things that can come from that. And we're going to talk about some of them. But the mindful eating is really about taking yourself out of that, oh, I'm just, what's on my phone? What's on my computer? What's my kid saying? It's just about being present in the moment and focusing on the act that you're doing. You're eating food. You're bringing nourishment into your body. So let's look at why that approach might be beneficial to the actual digestive process. And to understand that, we really need to talk about the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system is this system in the body that kind of runs a lot of the show behind the curtains. Like you don't have to think about the autonomic nervous system. Do Like I got to think about digesting. It just kind of happens. You just kind of breathe. These things happen without you thinking about them or trying to control them. And the autonomic nervous system has two sides. It has a sympathetic side, which is our fight or flight state. And it has the parasympathetic side, which is our rest and digest state. So both of these states are appropriate. We really need them in specific circumstances in our life. So they're both great. There's nothing wrong with either state. But to really digest our food correctly, we need the digestive functions to be functioning correctly. And when someone's digestion is not optimal, there's a lot of things that can make that happen. But the most common issues are that a person would not be making enough stomach acid. We really need that stomach acid when the food comes in to acidify that food so we can start that breakdown process. We need to break that food down so that we can get the nutrients out of that food. So it's very common today for someone not to be making enough stomach acid. Millions of people around the world turn off stomach acid every day on purpose. And there's also a wide variety of reasons that someone might not be making enough stomach acid when they're not trying to turn it off. So that's a really big deal. And another thing that happens is that it's very common for someone's bile in this gallbladder to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly. And we really need this bile to come down and neutralize the acids that leave the stomach so that we can really bust that food apart and get the nutrients out of it. We need the bile to emulsify our dietary fats so that we can use those dietary fats and also so we can access fat soluble vitamins like A, E, D, and K. So that function is very important. And the third really common problem is that someone will have some type of bacterial or yeast, fungal overgrowth type situation that is restricting their ability to really access all the nutrients in that food, or it can really slow the whole process down. That can be another problem that some type of overgrowth will create. And what's interesting is that a lot of times a person will have an overgrowth because they weren't making enough stomach acid to kill all the bad guys that were coming in on the food that we're eating. That stomach acid is supposed to be the barrier that when bad guys come in, they die in an acid bath. So if someone doesn't have enough stomach acid, that can get through there. So let's look at how this relates back to this autonomic nervous system. What's interesting is that the body really needs to be in that parasympathetic rest and digest state to be able to properly produce that HCL in the stomach, to produce that hydrochloric acid or stomach acid.
And a lot of people today, for a wide variety of reasons, can be really stuck in this sympathetic fight or flight state. And maybe they're really stressed in their life and that's kind of freaking them out and shoving them into that fight or flight state. But other issues can create that as well. So when we're looking at this stress response, where the body has shoved itself into this sympathetic state. And it does this on purpose. It does this for good reason. When the body moves into this sympathetic state, it basically changes how the whole body functions. And it's optimizing functions for survival. So if you were running from a lion, the body would move into this sympathetic state so it changes how the body functions so you can survive that running from a lion act. There's not a situation in your life where you need to run from your lion while you eat a cheeseburger. Nobody's going to do that. So there's no reason for the body to optimize for both of these states at the same time. There's no purpose for that. So when someone's really stressed, even if they're not running from a lion, maybe they're stressed because their boss is a jerk, or maybe they're late for work, or there's a lot of traffic, but the body doesn't understand that the boss is a jerk. The body might just think that their boss is eccentric or something, but really the body is just viewing this stress as an emergency and it's going to change the way the body functions. So if a person is too stressed, it can push them out of that state that gives them the ability to acidify their food correctly and start that breakdown process. So that can be very important. And when we're looking at this stress response, we have to understand that it's very easy for someone to have stress in their life and you might have to find a way to simmer down a little bit and reduce that stress. But stress can also be in the body. Maybe there is some type of overgrowth in the digestive tract or some other type of infection in the body that the body is basically going to war all the time. Or maybe someone doesn't have enough resources in the system to allow the body to function correctly and the body's kind of stressed about that. So there's a lot of things that can create stress in the body, but you might not feel stressed, but the body is stressed and pushing itself into that sympathetic fight or flight state. So what we do when we're doing this mindful eating is we can take things down at least a notch. We're trying to remove some of these stresses. We're not staring at our phone while we're eating. We're not looking at our computer and doing thinking about all these things that are stressful in our life. We're just thinking about the act of eating. So it just has the ability to push a person at least a little bit more into this parasympathetic state, just to create the body being a little bit more relaxed so it can have an easier time of moving into that state. So I sort of feel like that can be very important. Another thing is that when a person or a body is really stressed, it can raise stress hormones like estrogen. And when estrogen goes high, it has the ability to thicken up this bile so it won't flow correctly. So that's another problem of the digestive system that can come from a person being too far into that sympathetic fight or flight, man am I stressed out state. So can this mindful eating of just approaching it like, I'm going to really pay attention to the act of eating this food. I'm going to think about, oh, I'm digesting this. I'm getting nutrition out of this. I'm going to remove the stress from my life. Can that help someone's digestive process work better? According to science, yeah, it can help, especially if a person's just like on the fence. Maybe their digestion is not so great. Maybe it's working okay, but it's not optimal. Doing this kind of thing could really push somebody over the fence and really help their digestion work better. So you're going to hear from people in the comments like, oh, I started mindful eating and it changed my whole world. My digestive problems went away. And that's because they had some problems that were probably not significant. But if someone has major malfunctions, if they're not making any stomach acid for a wide variety of reasons, maybe it doesn't really have a lot to do with stress. It could have a lot to do with maybe the body doesn't have the resources to make hydrochloric acid, or there's other things that are missing that's not letting it do that. Well, saying ohms and meditating and doing all these things ain't gonna fix that. So a person might need to take steps to correct a malfunction. Still, this mindful eating could at least push them a little bit in the right direction. I just don't want to view this as, oh, it's going to fix everything. It's going to be like wizardry and magic and fix major digestive malfunctions. It's just not going to do that. So do I think people should use mindful eating if they want to improve their digestion? Why not? It's free. Go ahead and do it. Do I think everybody needs to do that? I really don't. I think if someone has digestive function working correctly, that they can be a little bit stressed out and it's not going to totally take them out of that digestive process because their body is working in an optimal state. 
If somebody's not, then the more they can do this mindful eating, the more it could help. But if there's major malfunctions, you're going to have to fix those malfunctions to really optimize digestion. So the first thing to do is understand, is my stomach making acid correctly? And is my bile flowing correctly? So if you want to understand that right now, you can jump over and check out our videos on 10 signs of low stomach acid and 10 signs of poor bile flow. I hope that helps.